Hello and welcome to the 3D Printer Tips Guide series. This time around I want to talk about the possibilities of installing Clipper and Octoprint on various devices. As you may have noticed, it's not exactly easy to obtain Raspberry Pi. And there are various theories about why is that the case. But honestly it doesn't really matter because there are plenty of alternatives that are widely available. Today I want to talk about most popular ones and give you a generic idea on what devices Clipper and Octoprint can run. In short, anything that can run Linux distribution based on Debian. This means, even if it's not officially supported but there are some kind of Linux images, you will most likely be able to control your printer with that device. But let's be honest. There are way too many cheap devices that can fill this role. If I wanted to cover every single one, this video would be a couple of hours long. So I want to talk about the ones that are confirmed to be working and the ones that you may try if you have them on hand. I will try to subjectively score each of them in three categories on a scale 1 to 10. First will be the price, second will be the ease of installation and third will be extensibility. So let's not waste any more time and let's get to it. I will start from the one that is confirmed by at least a couple of people and it's almost a drop-in replacement for Raspberry Pi. And it's Orange Pi 02. It works well with both Octoprint and Clipper. This single board computer can be found at around $35 to $40 and it's easily available from Amazon, AliExpress, eBay and even on your local shops. Has a built-in Wi-Fi and a couple of ready Linux images that you don't need to tinker with to get up and running. In terms of price I would give it a 9 out of 10. Because it's still not the cheapest option and you can get something for Clipper for about half the price. Nevertheless, it's much cheaper than Raspberry Pi or other more expensive single board computers. When it comes to ease of installation, I would rate it 8 out of 10. There are two caveats here. First one is that there are at least two images, Armbian and Ubuntu. They both work. However, when I tried to help someone with the Armbian, it turned out that the Wi-Fi did not work. Supposedly it's fixed now, but we ended up flashing Ubuntu image from the manufacturer and everything worked out of the box. Another thing is that you will need to use Kiauch, which is a script that you will be using in pretty much every case whenever you want to install Clipper or Octoprint or anything that isn't Raspberry Pi. Don't get me wrong, it's still by far the easiest way of installation, since it's basically just three comments. But to be fair, I'll deduct one point simply because Raspberry Pi has an image that has everything installed and set up. When it comes to extensibility, you can expect pretty much the same thing as Raspberry Pi except built-in camera. Standard connectors and general purpose input-output header are similar. Having said that, I will rate it 7 out of 10. Even Raspberry Pi isn't as connective as other options out here. There are many other devices in single board computer category. For example, I'm running Clipper on a very old Kubi board too, which still can be purchased. It's pretty expensive, but I had it lying around, so it cost me nothing to try. Needless to say, if you want to see more comprehensive list of what can be substituted, I suggest checking out Armbian website under the download section. And if you have any doubts, I would confirm it on some kind of 3D printer discord. Ask people if a specific device you have in mind would be able to do the job. They differentiate when it comes to hardware, but neither Clipper nor Octoprint are really resource heavy, so most of these devices should work. However, some of them may not have a built-in Wi-Fi, and you will have to buy another dongle for it, some of them may not have enough USB ports, so keep that in mind when choosing alternatives. It will probably work, but it may be a little bit harder to set up than the Orange Pi. Second option is the PC. You can get small PCs such as Thin Client for around 20 bucks. And this is truly the cheapest option out there that is absolutely viable. Price score is 10 out of 10. 
Not to mention if you have some older laptop lying around that is not used, it will cost you nothing. This is also the best way to control a printer farm. Most cheap PCs up to, let's say, a hundred bucks will be able to control at least 10 printers simultaneously. Obviously a more powerful machine will be able to control even more printers, but you get the idea. Instead of buying 10 orange pies for $400, you will be able to do so with a $100 PC. Ease of installation. This is when things get tricky. You will need to set up an entire operating system. Most likely from the scratch, since you will be using a hard drive and not an SD card. So I would say it's 5 out of 10. Any distribution that is Linux based should work, so for example Debian or Ubuntu. Nowadays, installing Linux isn't as hard as it used to be, but it still requires quite some knowledge about how Linux works. And it's not as easy as just flashing SD card with the image. A couple of points were also deducted because of hardware incompatibilities that you may experience. Unfortunately, Linux isn't as plug and play as Windows is. I would strongly recommend confirming that specific PC that you have in mind will work. When it comes to extensibility, a full-blown PC can easily reach 10 out of 10. Score will be as good as the PC that you will choose. For example, if you buy a thin client that doesn't have the PCI Express ports or any other fancy stuff that new motherboards have, well, the extensibility score will drop. However, due to the sheer amount of USB ports, you can connect pretty much anything, including some CAN boost controllers, GPI extensions and other weird stuff. Third category is Android devices such as an old phones, TV boxes, tablets, toasters, fridges, calculators and anything that has powerful enough CPU with at least one USB port. Yes, you can run both Octoprint and Clipper from the old phone. There isn't much information about it, so it will be a bit of a painful process but when it comes to a price, you can get an old phone for like 50 bucks. Or for free if you have one lying around. I would say it's 8 out of 10. Good thing about it is that phones usually have a pretty good cameras in them, so technically price is a bit cheaper than buying an SBC and a webcam separately. When it comes to ease of installation, there will be two separate scores in this category. One for the Octoprint, which I would say it's 8 out of 10 and Clipper 3 out of 10. Because for Octoprint you can use Octo4a, which is a simple APK that you will need to install on your Android device. Technically there is an extension for Clipper that is easy to install, but it's currently in the experimental stage. So if that won't work, you will have to set up a Linux deploy virtual machine on your phone, which is possible, but by far harder option than anything previously mentioned. Extensibility is a bit on the low side. All you have in those Android devices is usually just an USB. Maybe you can have some USB hubs, but I'm not sure if they will work. You will also need to buy a USB power splitter, since you will need some way to power your device and connect it to the printer at the same time. Overall, 5 out of 10. Redeeming quality is built in camera, and built-in touch screen that should be a lot better than those touch screens that you can buy for 3D printers. Last but not least, router. It may sound funny, but you can run Clipper and Octoprint on routers. It's called Clipper WRT and Octo WRT. It is a firmware for routers that are based on Open WRT. First device on a router hardware that was meant to control 3D printer was Creality Wi-Fi Box. Unfortunately, it did not meet people's expectation, so someone had to do it right. Needless to say, such routers can be extremely cheap. You can get compatible hardware for around $20 to $50. It's not as powerful as single board computer or PC or even an Android device, but it should be plenty enough to handle printer control. Don't expect to control more than one printer though. Price 9 out of 10. When it comes to ease of installation, you may be surprised, but it's probably one of the easiest ways to get Clipper and Octoprint running. All you need is to connect your router and point it to a newly created firmware file. After that, there is a short guide on how to finish installation on the website, and I will link it in the description below. 
Overall, it's not easier than getting it installed on a single board computer with Kyauch script, but it's definitely easier than installing an entire operating system and setting it up from the scratch. 7 out of 10. Extensibility. Well, considering you will probably have only one USB on the board, it's not much. Not to mention, this isn't a full Linux distribution. It's an open WRT firmware, so you will be severely limited here. I'm pretty sure you can forget about general purpose input output and other fancy stuff. You will get a webcam running and that's pretty much it. 3 out of 10. As a bonus, let's talk about the JNU Raspberry Pi. Honestly, I do not recommend it unless you already bought it. Not only it's hard to get, it's really expensive for the hardware. It's also an overkill for this particular application. Even if you manage to get one, you won't be using two-thirds of what Raspberry Pi can do. Don't get me wrong, it's a great single board computer with a lot of community support. But that community support is usually needed when you are developing your own application and you will need to have something really custom. 3D printer control, like I've shown before, isn't really hardware specific. Maybe you can utilize GPO to control things like LED strips or maybe accelerometers, but that's about it and it can be done on Orange Pi as well. Price, 3 out of 10. Ease of installation, 10 out of 10, simply because you will have a pre-built images that you can flash on your board. And the extensibility is 7.5 out of 10. That extra half point is because you have a built-in camera connector. That will be it for today's video. I think I covered most of the major hardware that can run 3D printer software control. If you know something that I'm not aware of and can run Octoprint or Clipper, let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked that video, hit that subscribe button, it will help me get motivated to do more videos in the future.